The title for today, as you can see, is called Don't Spend Money on What You Can Do Without. We have so much pressure in, the, in this world. We have so much pressure on anyone, every one of us. And either you like it or not, money is a big part of our lives. Money is a big part of our daily lives. And there is no way, I mean, most, most of us, we go to work for money. And, um, you know, we go to school to be able to have a good living. And our life is revolving about money, about job, about survival. And there is just no way for you to survive in this world right now without money. Money is so essential. It's an essential part of our lives. And there is no, you know, there's just no way you can avoid it. Even if you are so spiritual and you said, well, I, I want to live on God. Even God himself, Jesus, the son of God said, you cannot live by bread alone. God, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. So there is just no way we can just say, no, I mean, we cannot live by bread alone. That is, we, we need God. But on the other hand, even though we need God, but we cannot live by the, by the word of God alone as well. It says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by or every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we cannot live by bread alone on one hand, but on the other hand, we cannot live by the word alone as well. We cannot just live on the word of God. If you just live on the word of God and you just want to live on the Bible, praying and fasting and going to church, you will discover that your body is dying and you are going to die eventually. So without money, you, there is no bread. And without bread, there is no way you are going to survive. So we cannot live by the word of God alone. And just like we cannot live by bread alone as well. So money is essential. There is just, I mean, without money, we cannot wear our clothing. Without money, we cannot, you know, we live in a beautiful house. Without money, we cannot take care of our families. Without money, we cannot train our children. So money is a big part of our lives. So, so, you know, judging from that, why am I talking on this topic? Uh, don't spend money on what you can do without. Because money, the role of money is so big. And even the Bible says that money answers all things. Money is the answer to all things. No matter your challenge, no matter the problem you have, no matter the, you know, the, the, the questions you have in your life, money will be a big part of it for you to resolve any issue in life. So because money is such a big part of our lives, it is also important that we learn how to manage money. And not just how to manage money, but how to rule money so that money does not manage us, so that money does not rule us. You know, money is a good servant, but it's a very bad master. So if you don't know how to rule and manage money, money is going to become your master. And because it's a bad master, it's going to oppress you, it's going to drive you crazy. <laughs> so if you don't want money to be your master, and if you don't want money to drive you crazy, then you've got to learn how to manage money, and you've got to learn how to become the master of money. Because when you make, when you become the master over money, and you know how to manage money, then you will discover that money is a good servant. If you can make, train it, train yourself to manage it, it will be a good servant to you. But it's a bad master if you don't know how to manage yourself, and if you don't know how to manage money. So now, but the thing I want to talk about today is the fact it how we spend money that don't spend money on what you can do without. You will not believe this, but the truth of the matter is that most of the things that we spend money on, they are things that really we could have done without. Many of the things we spend our money on, we could actually have avoided it. And this thing that we are spending our money on most of the time, it's not because they are our needs, it's not because we really you know, desperately need those things sometimes. Sometimes most of the things that we spend our money on, we spend them because we are we are willing we just want to follow the trend most of us are just following the trend some of us are spending money on things because they are popular because the old world is because the old world is using that 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 no that stuff and because that's the latest thing and because it's the new thing in town right now that's why most of us buy what we buy and and we are under so much pressure to to do this. We are under so much pressure to follow the trend of our society, the cultural trend, the the, the traditional trend, the trend of our colleagues, the trend of our of our you know of our friends. And uh, we come under that influence, whether we like it or not. If you can, can you try to do some analysis of what you spend money on, you will discover and you will be shocked to discover. You will be shocked to discover that. Uh, if, after, if you do an, a, a very thorough inventory, 
you will discover that most of the things that you are spending your money on, they are not actually things that are absolute necessity. They are most of the time things that you, you know, you, you, you are buying and spending money on because of some influence, one influence or the other. Uh, you know, I know people in my own country where I come from that when they, whenever they have parties or when they have, when they have some ceremonies, you know, they have uh, a tradition of buying clothes and everybody have to buy the same kind of clothes. So, for example, if you have five or ten parties in a year or ceremonies in a year, so you are going to buy ten sets of clothes together with all your friends. So you have about 50 people wearing the same clothes. And it's not that you don't have other clothes to wear in your house. It's just because, because it's a ceremony and you want to be the same with your friends. So you are buying the same kind of clothes just to go to one party. And then you, you, know, you have to keep it. And because you cannot return it back to the shop and then you know you have to go to another party you have to buy another set of clothes then you have to go to another party and buy another set of clothes and you know we are spending money and at the same time we come around and complain that we don't have enough money 90 98 percent of the people living in the world are having money problem maybe 99 percent 99 percent of everybody in our world is having money problem. 99% of people are actually complaining that they don't have enough money, no matter what country you go to. You know, what I was surprised when I was going to America the first time, I thought America is the richest country in the world, so more, people should be more satisfied. Mm -hmm. You know the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know it. You know the answer to that. <laughs> they have never met people who are more dissatisfied and unsatisfied like in America. That is where I saw people complaining that they 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 fool or uh, you know some liter of uh, of benzene or uh, fuel or oil got as you know it's increased by one cent or two cents. They have never seen anybody complain that the, the liter of I mean some well, the price of oil increases by one li one cent or two cent and they begin to make so much noise about their part for in America. Even in Africa, where people are the poorest, people don't complain when it won, once the price of oil increases by one cent. But, but you know, because people people are dissatisfied. In, in, I went to Japan. I thought people should be a little bit more satisfied in Japan. It's even worse. People are more dissatisfied in Japan. So no matter what country you go to, everybody is having money problem. Ninety nine percent, maybe just one percent of the population of the world is not complaining about money. It's not looking for money and complaining about money. Every other person, 99% of people in the world are complaining about money. They are in money crisis. They are in money problem. They are saying there is no money and they are working from morning to night to look for more money. Or the, and, the, and the reason why we are all we are dissatisfied about our money situation is because we are not managing money well. It's because we are misusing money. Most people misuse money. Most mis people misuse money. And so, like I said in, 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 my, in the example with people from my country, that, you know, that come under uh, social pressure or cultural pressure. And because of that cultural pressure, they want to, you know, you, they want to support their friends or they want to support their colleagues or they want to support, you know, their, you know the, the ceremony that they are going to or the event they are going to. So they have to wear the same clothes and they have to spend money they don't have. Some people have to buy clothes two, three, four times a year that they don't have to buy. It's, it's not a necessity. It's not because, you know, without that clothes, they would not have anything to wear. But they, they just needed to wear the clothes to go to the party. And also, unfortunately, too many people are now believing that, uh, you know, that it is how much things you have that determines how happy you are. So we have been programmed right now to think that, our happiness depends on how much things we possess. But Jesus tells us the opposite, that the life of a person is, does not consist of the abundance of the things he has, which means that the amount of things we have and the quantity of things we have does not determine our happiness. The, our happiness, our joy, is not dependent on the amount of things we are able to acquire or we are able to compile. It is deception. It is a deception to think that the amount of things you have is what determines your joy. So some people think that they will be totally happy when they have a house, a big house, and when they have two or three cars. Let's say two or three cars, then they'll be happy and satisfied. And when they have 
maybe big television set, when they have, uh, you know, swimming pool, when they can travel to, to for, you know, for some resort or summer holidays. And so we are thinking that, you know, uh, even some people, but when you get to have th that one house and three cars, you discover that, no, but the other guy has three houses. <laughs> So you think, no, maybe when I have three houses, I'll be more happy now. <laughs> and then five houses, then seven houses, then as many houses as possible. So, you know, it's a deception of life. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Now, we need to spread this word and we need to do it together. For that to happen, we need your help. Just five little steps that you could help us to spread the word. Number one thing we need you to do is to like the videos please go like this video right now number two if you have not yet subscribed to our channel please go ahead and subscribe to the channel number three we need you to press and click on that notification bell you see the bell go press on it and number four we need you to go comment write your comment good or bad just write what you feel number five share Share, share, share on every platform, share on Instagram, share on Facebook, just share and spread the word. Thank you so much.